So our next early career investigator lecture is from Professor Bowen Lee, an assistant professor in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences and the Institute for Biomedical Engineering at the University of Toronto. Dr. Peter Cullis, Catalan Carrico, and Drew Weissman selected Prof. Lee for his work on lipid nanoparticle technology. Delighted to hand it over to you, Professor Lee. Good morning, everyone. So thank you for having me here today. Uh, first of all, I want to thank my heroes, uh, Dr. Peter Cullis, Dr. Uh, Kareko and Dr. Westman for selecting me for the ECR award this year. So my first slides, you know, my first slide, I want to recap the contribution of this year's uh, Gardner Award laureates. So Dr. Kareko and Dr. Westman basically teach people how to safely place the chemical modified MRA in human body for therapeutic purposes without causing any trouble, like uh, inducing any inflammatory uh, responses. Meanwhile, uh, Dr. Peter Kulis spent almost half a century to teach people how to deliver this kind of uh, nucleic acids. The ionizable lipids, uh, ionizable lipid nanoparticle, enable us to safely use this amazing uh, mod chemically modified mRNA. So without their contribution, we won't be able to save the COVID-19 mRNA vaccines, which have saved millions of people's lives. So, the new technology of mRNA vaccine actually, you know, revolutionized a whole field of vaccines. It made the development process of vaccine much easier than before. During the pandemic, the scientists were able to easily sequence the spike protein on the coronavirus, make the mRNA using the template of, from the spike protein, and load them into the ionizable lipid particles developed by Dr. Peter Kulas, and then once this MR vaccine or uh, MR loading nanoparticle got injected into the human body, they can in situ express um, spike protein in human cells and then which can induce protective, protective immune responses. So previously before uh, the MR vaccine technology, it usually takes five or 10 years for human to develop one vaccine. But the MR vaccine was developed within 12 months. So which actually significantly uh, improve, you know, like uh, the protection of human health. Now, when we have this amazing uh, or magic molecules, how can we deliver them? What we call it a hopeful message. How can we deliver this hopeful message? The mRNA molecule itself is very big compared with a lot of small molecule drugs. It's about 1,000 kilo Dalton. Meanwhile, they are extremely unstable and they are very vulnerable to nucleus in human body. And more importantly, they only work in the cytoplasm, different from many small molecule drugs or antibody drug. So that's why we need the lipid nanoparticles. The classical compositions of lipid nanoparticles composed of the four ingredients, among which the amnazolipase plays the most important role that can stabilize the mRNA, meanwhile an, a, allow the mRNA to escape from endosome after being taken up by the cells. So this, is a, this scheme basically shows how does the lipid nanoparticles work. Once the nanoparticle is taken up by the cells, the nozzle lipid will play, uh, play a magic that can break the endosome membrane, allow the mRNA get released in the cytosol, which will later on bind with the ribosome and lead to the protein expression, which can later on be presented by MHSA2 or MHSA1 to induce corresponding immune responses. So these lipid nanoparticles play a super important role in the development of mRNA vaccine. So that's why the title of uh, uh, the breaking news of chemical engineering news say that without the lipid shells, there will be no MR vaccines for COVID-19. So this picture basically shows what is the landscape of the, all of the RNA, uh, really, uh, uh, RNA LMP drug that have already been approved for clinical use. So the first one is the, the first sRNA drug, which is another type of RNA medicine that was approved by the USFD in 2018. Uh, the other two, uh, you must be familiar with the other two. One is uh, Moderna's MR vaccine. One, the other is uh, the MR vaccine from Pfizer and BioNTech. Uh, the reason why I want to put them all of the formulation together here is I want to emphasize, as you can see, that except for the avnazolipid, all the other ingredients in these formulations are almost the same. So that means that actually the avnazolipid is the core of the LMP technology that dis differentiates different companies. So my lab basically focused on streamlining the development of next generation lipid nanoparticles 
using high throughput technologies. Because the one size fits all approach actually doesn't work for RNA delivery. In order to maximize the MRA potential for more disease in other organs, not only for muscle, not only for brain, not only for bone marrow, we really need to identify or exhibit that our process to identify new nanoparticles to satisfy the delivery tasks. So basically, our group has established a multi-component reaction that can make the process of synthesizing of nasal lipids much easier than before. So we can use the, this one pulse multi-component reaction to prepare thousands of alnazole lipids within one day. After synthesizing this uh, combinatorial libraries of alnazole lipids, we will formulate them with the other ingredients, uh, lipids ingredients, into nanoparticles, and then perform a high throughput screening on these lipid nanoparticles to identify the one that can satisfy our needs. So here, I just want to show one small cases, like how can we leverage our platform to identify new nanoparticles uh, to find new application for MR therapy. So inhalation of MRI for treating lung disease has been receiving more and more attention. So if we can help people to inhale these MRI therapies, we can treat a lot of lung-related disease, such as cystic fibrosis, like ADAT disease, lung cancer, or COPD, or even COVID-19. However, the delivery to the lung has been more challenging than the muscle due to the uh, existing of mucus and other biological barriers. So for example, one company called Transfer Bio, which has been uh, fo uh, focusing on lung delivery of MRA for many years, they failed that clinical trial, for, uh, trial two uh, uh, for cystic fibrosis treatments using MRA. So that's why this company sponsored our work when I was a postdoc at MIT. And we use our um, high throughput platform to identify new lipids for them, specifically for the lung delivery of MRA. So as I say, like, uh, we are highly interested in the multi-component reaction. Again here, we classified the structure of our lipids into three parts, uh, head group, linker, and tail. And then based on this classification, we design the structure for each component and simply mix them together. So we were able to synthesize 720 lipids in this, uh, for this batch. And then uh, luckily, after we performed the high throughput screening, we identify one lipid, it's called RCB4-8, that is super potent in transfecting the lung cells. As you can see that when we compare this new lipids with MC3, which was uh, another lipids approved by the FDA for RNA delivery, um, the RCB4-8 new lipid is almost 100, more than 100 fold better than this benchmark lipid. And furthermore, we test whether we can use these lipid nanoparticles to deliver mRNA for gene editing in the lung. Uh, in, this, in this experiment, we use the AI14 mice. Uh, this genetically modified mice has a very unique gene sequence. So it contains a TD tomato signal in its sequence. However, we, we can't say that any fluorescence from TD tomato in the normal cells due to the presence of a stop sign in its gene. So once the MRA, the Cray recombinant MRA, is successfully delivered to a spe specific cell, this Cray recombinant will be able to remove the LOX P flank the outside of the stop sign and enable the TD tomato fluorescence to be seen on the specific cell. So in this way, we can easily tell which type of cell got transfected and how many percentage of cells can be transfected in the airway. And we saw that we were able to uh, very effectively transfect the lung epithelial cells. And we are extremely interested in lung epithelial cells because lung epithelial cells are actually the disease location for a lot of lung disease, particularly for cystic fibrosis. We're pretty excited to say that uh, we can not only transfect it uh, or edit the CD80 cells, but also club cells, which are kind of stem cells. That means that through, uh, by transfecting the, or gene, do gene editing on the club cells, which are stem cells, we can provide a more like a long-term effect because after the CD80 cells died, the club cells can still differentiate into the CD80 cells. So finally, I want to thank um, Dr. Uh, uh, Carico, Dr. Westman, and Dr. Peter Kles again for selecting me as the DCR awardee to this year. And I also want to thank uh, U of T and uh, all the funding agency that support um, our work. I also want to thank uh, my colleagues and my collaborators at U of T and, uh, and MIT and University of Massachusetts and Northwestern University. And, uh, and particularly, I want to thank uh, my lovely lab members. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. <laughs>